Good morning, everybody. It is the 31st of January 2015, and you can probably guess by just failing at saying 2015, I am not exactly in the brightest condition. Yesterday wasn't really good for my voice, let's just say that. So, I'm currently having the bassiest voice I ever had in like over three years. And I wish I had a better microphone just so you can hear how much bass my voice is producing right now. I can feel the desk under my arms shaking every time I say something. And I fail at saying something. Man, what a great start. Anyway, you asked a bunch of questions and I figured, yeah, this is a perfect opportunity to answer them now. So, let's just cut some shit and get right into it. And I'm sorry in advance, this is not going to be edited at all. So, this is what I sound like when I don't edit out everything I say wrong. Okay, let's go. First up, from the United States, we have Austin Guyen. I think... yeah, I don't know if I said that right. Anyway, any chance... any change of Sonic Eraser 2? Yeah, there is not going to be a change, but I think what you're going to ask if there's a chance of Sonic Eraser 2. Okay, here's the deal. Um, that one teaser video I made like one or two years ago, I don't remember exactly. That was a hoax. Okay, I said it now, it was a hoax. A few people already knew about that, but now everybody does. You see, the reason I never ever did anything regarding Sonic Eraser 2 is because, let's be honest, Sonic Eraser was a special thing with a special formula. The formula being do whatever. So if I make a sequel of a game hack that doesn't really have a much plot device and just does whatever it wants, it'd still be a completely different game. And just by putting explosions everywhere in a game, I wouldn't make it any different. So I just, nah, it's not going to happen, sorry. But that doesn't mean I don't have other plans for future projects. Just so you can think. But that video... Just get it out of your mind. It was a joke. Yeah, but, but I laughed uh, at all the people who just didn't understand it. It was pretty interesting. Next up, we have Capri Phoenix and Mr. Gibbs 17 Pretty much asking, please can you continue the German balance? I loved it so much. Are you going to continue the German balance series? I loved it so much. He asked the same question pretty much twice. And Mr. Gibbs said the variation, will German's balance TF2 ever come back? Okay, here's the deal. I actually wanted to bring this back. A long, long time ago. When I started the series, I was disappointed at how a little bit of response I got. Like, I think my first video got 2000 views, my third got, I don't know, 1000? It's pretty much not the numbers I expected. But then again, I realized I'm still a new YouTuber in that regard, so I can't really expect to be like Star or Germa right away. So I wanted to bring it back. And then Valve made an update that prohibited anyone from ever editing the offline item scheme. Which basically means I have absolutely no way, without setting up a server, to test new item balance changes. So, there's really nothing I can do, even if I wanted to. If I ever find out a way how to, I don't know, bypass that block, I can probably bring it back, but uh, I'd rather not do that for two very exploited, very important reasons. The first being, I don't know how paranoid Wealth is going to get. I don't think they will uh, VAC ban me, but uh, you see, I don't really want to take chances. That's the one thing. And the other thing is, even if I do that, I don't even know how many more people are going to get interested into the series. 
You see, you three people, you two people just said, yeah, I want to see this come back. But I don't really know if you're an exception or this is going to be a huge deal. So, we will see. Maybe one day there will be a bypass that is actually ban proof, let's just say that. Alright, next one. Sorry. Carl Schoter asks, I really love that time you played Eraser after a few drinks. Drunk playthroughs are always a fun thing. By any chance, have you considered playing anything else while wasted? Yes, I have considered. Yes, I have tried. You see, if you may have noticed, I took down the original video. Well, not took down, but I made it unlisted. There was something that bothered me about the whole concept. Um, while it is fun for a lot of people, it's extremely, extremely uncool when you have people around you who discover your YouTube channel without you saying anything ever and they play that video in front of the whole class without asking you. See, that was kinda not the point. So I just said no, let it be a one-time thing for the few people who watched it and then just move on. I'm sorry, <laughs> I would have loved to do more of these but it's just really not worth the embarrassment. So sorry. Adelic Sam asks two questions. Talk about your big penis. I can talk about my big penis when we are alone. So come to my room tomorrow. The other question is also best song from each Metallica album Go Go Go. Oh shit. Okay, good. Kill them all. I don't like any song. Really like. Right, the Lightning, we have um, Call of Cthulhu. And if we have Master of Puppets from Master of Puppets, whoa. Um, and Justin Fall, and one, I really, or Tight, I just don't really know which one's better. Um, then we have, I guess, Nothing Else Matters, though, you know, just for B, Nothing Else Matters. From Load, we got... oh god... Uh, what's the first song? No, 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 not the first song. Um, was it... I always confuse which song was on which side. Just Load and Reload, my two favorite songs are Until It Sleeps. And the other one was King Nothing. I guess those were both from Load, right? Yeah, in that case, let's just go Reload also has Fuel. That's a good one. Then we have, does SMN count? Let's just say it does, in that case it's obviously No Leaf Clover. Garage Inc. Don't really like that album, except for Whiskey in the Jar. Big surprise. Saint Anger, I'm the only guy in the entire world who loved the entire album, but if I had to pick a favorite, it would probably be Frantic or Saint Anger itself. I don't really know. And then Death Magnetic. Um, okay, that one is tough. I think it's all Nightmare Long. Yeah, I think it's that one. So there you go. And if you had to go with Lulu, I'd probably say go fuck yourself. Next up, we have the Slack asking, how much better is German engineering than American engineering? I heard that's it, that it's like three times as much more engineering. Well, you see, waste like the problem here is three times implies the base value is anything greater than the zero. So you can just times three by zero because then you would still get zero. See what I'm getting at? Cepheus just more. I hope I pronounced it right, I probably didn't, sorry. Glad to see you're not dead. Okay, time for a question. Well, I will say, how is going? How is Sonic Eraser getting along? I just asked that. Uh, answered, sorry, sorry. But these things can wait, so... Okay, maybe I should read your question first, and then think about the answer. But now let's go. So I think I will ask... What gimmicks do you find to be either the best or the most fun to play with in video games? 
It could be a gimmick enemy, gimmick obstacle, gimmick puzzle, or even a gimmick level. Give me your thoughts. Hmm, uh... I think for video games what matters the most to me is... Mm, how do you put it in words? I need something that doesn't need a ton of shit to engage me. Like, games that use simplicity as a storytelling device. Um, I think Sonic 3 and Knuckles is the best example for that. Without ever saying any words at all, you get the story clearly. And it does so in a mind-blowingly awesome way for me that I just can't comprehend it. But uh, I know this is going to be a little contradicting to Sonic Eraser because I actually did include story text there. But here's the thing, I only included them for fun because if you read the story you will actually see that they don't even contribute anything to, to the end. <coughs> Sorry. Anything to the entire game. So uh, yeah, let's just go with that. Simplicity done well. That's what I like about video games the most. K Senshi asks, give some tips about what you think that are good for good Sonic levels or a level with a nice and fun design. Um, there really isn't a way of saying this is how you have to do it in order to be perfect. You know, there can be tons of different ways to make an awesome Sonic uh, game or Sonic hack or Sonic level. Um, I just think, um, personally, uh, here the rule of simplicity strikes again. You see in original Sonic games we have all these uh, endless levels with five different paths to take, I don't fucking know. And that's, while awesome, and it's a lot of replay value, the issue is you do so much work with only one-fifth of the entire game being actually displayed to people unless they replay the game over and over again. So, um, yeah, I just think make a game that uses simplicity in its level design, like I do, because if you play Eraser more times you will actually see it's linear. There's only one path you can take every time. Um, and try to make that one the most fun so that the single path, which every player has to path, is still so much fun that you want to replay the game. At least that's how I do it. Okay, and last one on YouTube is Epic Elysia Speedy Enterprises. Okay, I'm going to put a disclaimer on the beginning of the video that I suck at pronouncing names. Sorry about that. So how goes the quest to improve your reading speed? And I'll see... Uh, oh, okay. First about that. Uh, it doesn't go at all. <laughs> I tried to improve it, but I think I'm still st stuck at something like 250 words per second. A uh, minute, sorry. Second would be awesome. <laughs> um, but I think 250 words per minute is actually pretty fine. It's good average reading speed. In all seriousness, what are some of your more founder memories from your childhood? Was there anything standard that really drove you to make a razor? Oh, this is... See, this is why I suck at reading questions. I'm going to make a list next time and make it all clearly separated. So I cannot fuck up. Okay. In all seriousness, what are some of your more founder memories from your childhood? Um... Yeah... Uh didn't exactly have any standout moments I can think of right now. Not to say my childhood sucked too much, but it's not like, oh, this was the best day ever. Uh, I remember um, in my local hometown we have uh, an old stone factory uh, that was closed, I think, 10 years before I was born and has never been touched then, since. Um, and I used to go there with my friend uh, every single day at some point. We used to make campfires and have fun getting in the mud and shit and 
not this shit, but the mud. <laughs> uh, that was fun. We still visit that place from time to time, but it feels like, uh, you know, you get, go there so many times that at some point you just don't even really care about so. Mm -hmm. Was there anything standard that really drove you to make Eraser? Basically, I want to know who, what influenced you, if anyone, thing. And thing, I guess. Um, uh, the original story, I think I explained in my commentary series in the first one. Did I? I don't know, I need to rewatch the video. I used to make a hack called Sonic 1 Project 255 that was filled with stolen content and got me banned from every Sonic hacking website possible. And you see, then there was this guy called Dr. X Insanity, who Lotus later turned out to be Marky Jester. Uh, and I was kind of inspired by that mode, you know? Com coming back as someone else, uh, though in my case not literally someone else, just uh, as a better person, let's say, let's say that. I wanted to show the people that I can be awesome without stealing anything, and I guess I did that well. Speaking of influences, uh, Michael Bay was definitely not an influence. I never ever heard about Michael Bay, even once, before I made Sonic Eraser. And then when somebody mentions it, oh, you're a Sonic uh, Michael Bay guy, I don't know. Uh, then I just googled him and said, oh wait, he was the guy who did the, tr the Transformer films? Huh. I've never watched them, by the way. I haven't watched anything by Michael Bay except for the shitty horror movie remakes. <laughs> yeah. But the list of influences goes on and on and on. Like, there are so many things which just got into uh, Eraser because of other guys and Hex. I think the greatest influence for me was Sonic Mega Mix because it's the only Sonic uh, hack that I can even play today without feeling bored at all. It's the best example of a game that I've ever seen. And okay, good. Let's be honest. I stole the ring popping out when you destroy an enemy. I stole the super peel out. I stole. No, I didn't steal the lightning dash. But you can see, the, the ideas are pretty much copied over. And I should feel ashamed for that, but let's be honest, it's awesome! <laughs> okay. Next up, out of all the levels in Eraser, which one are you most satisfied with and how it turned out? I think that one is pretty simple to answer. Or is it? No, it's not. I just thought it was the answer. No, it's not. No, no. Okay, this is going to be tougher than I expected. I think... I can't really decide, so I'm going to say two. The first one is Unreal Place, because the level design was really a freaking joke. I literally got out paint and randomly scribbled around. And what ended up there? was my base to make the level. I finished the entire level design, more or less, of Unreal Place in a single day. The, ex uh, the programming, that was a real tough challenge, but the design? <clears throat> and it's a really fun level to play for me, I must say. That goes for special stages, and for real stages... I, I, at first I wanted to say... Um, Scar Knight Place. But unfortunately, it's not really the case, because Gun Night Place, uh, I don't know. The idea felt awesome, but that part after the boss is just... It, it makes me feel sad when I see people on YouTube Let's Plays failing at it. Which is understandable if you consider that it's pretty fucking hard. And not really fun to play. The idea was better than the execution. I think... Uh, I think Labyrinth Place is pretty awesome. Uh, and Rune Place. I think those two, th those are two are tied. I think if you go with normal levels. So yeah, those are the best ones. 
If you talk about satisfaction, I can't really say anything. Because I always nitpick about my own things and there's always something I hate. I actually wanted to make another update, but meh. Fixing those two things for the few people who care is not really worth it. I'd rather spend the time and effort into new projects. Okay, next one. Favorite beer. Krombacher Pilsner. In a 0.5 bottle. Yeah. What's your personal favorite movie? Uh, I don't really watch too many movies, I must admit. Though, if you had to pick one for the best movie ever, I guess. Um, yeah, not easy to answer. There are a few, there are a few movies that I really like that I can watch rewatch re every single time I kind of stumble across them. And right now, that's Inception and Inglourious Bastards. Yeah, I can rewatch those two movies every single time. It doesn't get boring or anything. But if you had to ask me for the favorite show, then it's definitely going to be Breaking Bad. Like, without even thinking twice. And finally, who do you personally look up in the hacking scene? That's definitely easy, Marky Jester. He was my mentor, he helped me so many fucking times, he's... He's everything I want to be. He's a one-man army of programming, artistic style, and music. He can make the most awesome hex, and he is his own team. He doesn't need help. That's... <coughs> how can you not be? No, not like him. I don't know. <sighs> I wish I was just like him. He's my wifey. <laughs> okay. That's it with the YouTube questions. Let's go over to the Fimfic questions, which should go pretty quick. First off, we have Refru asking from On a Tale of One to David Hasselhoff. How German are you? 82. Yeah, 82. That's a good number. Is David Hasselhoff even German? I didn't know that. Okay, I get, sorry, I gotta Google that. That's important right now. David Hasselhoff. Born in Baltimore, Maryland. What the hell does David Hasselhoff have to do with Germany? I want to know. You gotta tell me that next time if we see each other. Yeah. Um, Jay String asks, Your accent makes me want to hug you. Seriously? Oh, thanks. Wait, that's supposed to be a question. Uh, uh, your accent makes me want to hug you. Seriously? Confused. Brain malfunction abort. <laughs> Purple Prose asks, Your voice is pretty cool, TBH. That is not a question. I was not even trying to make a question. Purple, why do you suck so much? And definitely last but not least, we have Lightning Dash number 13 asking, Well, there are really three questions I would actually even remotely bother asking you, Selby. Of those three, only one holds enough for you for you to answer. Here are the three questions in no particular order. The two questions that don't really hold much value are crossed out with the reasons why they are crossed out. Okay, number one. Short of me winning every writing award known to mankind, how much of hell would you have to actually freeze over for you to even consider helping me with writing? A. You don't edit. B. I don't think I know the answer. And C. Nobody here wants to deal with a frozen earth. That is true. Um, brain malfunction number two. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to say now? Uh, I, I'm just going to skip this question because you asked me to. Number two, would you like a free tarot card reading? Uh, I don't, I just don't think you would be interested in such a thing. Those things cost money? Doesn't everything have an app nowadays for free? Another thing I'm going to check out later. And number three, the real question. Would you like to become friends of a film fiction? The only question is important enough for me for the time answering. Uh, fine, I guess. 
I have my Skype public. Do I? I think I do. Just add me. I don't have a problem with that. But yeah, uh, I think for a first episode that does answer every single question that was answered on this whole deal so far. Hmm. And I like that. I'm, I'm glad so many people were interested in this. I was kind of nervous only one or two guys were even going to bother saying something. I could answer the old questions right now too, that I think about it. Ah, you see, I'm already on it. I'm feeling in a good mood today. Let's just do it. And while I'm loading up the video, I can just quickly say that I lost two subscribers. <laughs> what did the little Selby ever do to you? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, we have the video here. And I think, is this a whole bunch of questions? Oh, yeah, here we have it. Okay, these questions are all over an entire year old, so if you even see those answers right now and you see yourself in the video right now, uh, do me a favor and just say, I'm still alive too, that would be awesome. Okay, starting from the bottom, we have Brin1100. Okay, why did you add three bolts in the Agnabus? That really got me saying, screw this. The better question should be, why not? Answer me that, Mr. Brin1100. Shadow Ninja8981, sorry. What inspired you to make in human mode? Um, there was, um, uh, let's say, yeah, there's a routine in the Sonic disassembly called Kill Sonic, which obviously kills Sonic if you lose all your rings and stuff. And there was one particular line that actually did the thing. I commented that line out and suddenly I was no longer really dying. And so I got the concept, hmm, a game in which you can die, but transform that into a challenge. Hmm, that does sound interesting, doesn't it? So yeah, it was pretty much the result of me messing around with random stuff. Game Master 0097 asks, what got you started in hacking and why did you create a hack like this? I think I asked it, or I answered that more or less earlier, but let me just say it again. I got started in hacking um, in middle of 2007, I guess. Uh, by discovering a video from the wonderful person named Nineko, or Nineko, or I don't even know what you call him, um, in which he describes how to play as Blue Knuckles in Sonic 3. I don't even know how I found that video, but I remember that as the first real moment that got stuck into my brain. Uh, it was just really, really awesome to me to see this games which I grew up with be messed around into being more awesome. So somehow I stumbled upon Sonic Retro, about the, all the existing hacks that are awesome, mainly Mega Mix version 3, and then just said, yeah, I want to be one of those guys. And so I did become one of those guys, more or less. Yeah. Out of all the levels you made, which one yeah, I already had said. Um, the constant just blah blah blah. Sonic Eraser two, no. Right, I have it. Okay. Okay, I think that does it for the first episode. Should I ever decide to do one of those uh, series again, I will of course let you know. And you can answer more questions then. Ask, sorry. But for now, uh, let's just call it a day and I hope this was interesting for you in some way. I am Salvi. I will see you next time when I come back from the undead to the real dead. Yeah. Bye.